Greetings everyone, Michelle Granberg here. Welcome to Positive Energy. Once again, bringing you enlightening television for your evolving soul. The shakuhachi is an ancient Japanese flute traditionally made from bamboo. The Zen Buddhist monks used it as a form of meditation. My guest, Glenn Swan, has been playing the shakuhachi for over 23 years. He's here to introduce us to this sacred and beautiful instrument. Take a few deep breaths and stay where you are because positive energy starts right now. So Glenn Swan, welcome to Positive Energy. Nice to have you here. Mm, thank you, nice to be here. So you play the shakuhachi. Yes. Tell us about the shakuhachi, a little bit of the brief history, and what sort of instrument is the shakuhachi? Well, the um, shakuhachi flute is a traditional Japanese instrument. It's an end-blown flute. Um, it was introduced to Japan from China, probably about seven or 800 AD. Um, initially, it served in the court music of Japan, and then little by little, um, it actually died out for a brief period of time, and then it um, was taken up by a sect of Zen priests. So from that on, from that point onward, it had a very strong affiliation with Zen. So tell me a little bit more about how it's related to Zen. I know that you yourself are a meditator, mm -hmm. as am I. Um, so do you meditate in the Zen tradition and talk about the shakuhachi as a form of meditation itself? Right. Um, yes, I, I do do a zazen, a Zen sitting meditation. I'm not a formally, you know, um, a formal student of Zen, but I, I have done residencies at uh, Tassajara, for example, and have had my own practice for many, many years. Um, basically, the um, as I mentioned um, in the history of shakuhachi, it began uh, as a court music in Japan, but then it was taken up by a group of mendicant priests. Uh, they were called the komoso, or straw mat priests. So um, they used it as not a musical instrument for entertainment purposes, but as a spiritual discipline in itself. So the playing of the flute in itself was a meditation and was used for alms as well. Um, I use it myself in that context as simply alone in my room or out in nature or what have you, using it as a sound meditation, uniting breath, sound, and intent at the same time, um, in addition to, of course, performing with it. Very interesting. So it, it's a meditation mm -hmm. in and of itself, and it helps us deepen and enhance our meditation. And mm -hmm. the mechanics of that is a little bit, it's the sound, it's the length of the sound, I guess, and the vibration or the tone it's, that carries us into meditation. It's definitely that. For the player, it's the breath, of course. Um, right, shakuhachi right. music, the, the meditation tradition music is not, doesn't have a, a metronomic rhythm to it because you're not playing with another instrument. You don't have to stay in beat with someone. So the phrases are basically um, determined by the length of your own natural breath. Uh, so there's an inhale and an exhale, wow. just like in sitting meditation. Also, there's no um, p -p -p -p, like huffing and puffing in the traditional Zen pieces. It's just a long flowing exhale. All repeats wow. are done with fingers. So uh, in, as such, it aims to have the fullest and deepest breath possible, plus the sound. Um, there are five major tones on it uh, that are related to five elements, five organ systems in the body. There's a whole kind of correspondence uh, between Chinese medical theory um, and shakuhachi uh, music as well. Wow, that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. It sounds like it's just this very, it's, it's natural. It's like a natural extension of, mm -hmm. of being human, using breath to create sound. Um, absolutely, it is that. Uh, th and although we do aim to develop technique, of course, ultimately we want to let go of that technique and just have the natural breath. So, so. you became interested and began to study in 1994, is that yeah, correct? That is so correct. what was it that originally piqued your interest so that, and how did you get started with mm. shakuhachi? Well, I had been introduced to Zen meditation before that, probably about 1991 or so. Um, and then uh, when I visited California uh, in 1993, I actually even deepened that practice because I was able to um, rent a room from a meditator. Uh, he did Tibetan tradition, but he also had affiliation to Zen Center. So I basically deepened my um, experience at that point. 
Then uh, at the same time, I had been playing other miscellaneous kinds of flutes, like uh, American Indian flute or um, other kinds of side blown flutes, etc. cetera. Uh, when I got back from California, I actually bought a Honda scooter from somebody. And he had shakuhachi on display in his living room when I came to pick up the scooter. I picked one up and I was able to get some sound out of it, so he actually um, gave me my first shakuhachi. Wow. At that point, I, you know, I kind of played around with it for a little bit, but shakuhachi is not an easy instrument, so I was lucky enough to find a teacher. And at the time, there were two teachers in Princeton, so I started off with uh, Tomie Han, who was my very first teacher. Um, from then on, I just kind of got hooked. You know, I've been um, doing it ever since. Yeah. It sounds like you and the shakuhachi were meant to be, mm -hmm. really meant to find each other. It's very interesting. Yeah, I, I, I think. Because it's un unusual yeah. and it's unique and not many people pick it up. And as you say, it's hard to play. So say a little yeah. bit more about that and maybe give us a, a short demo. You're going to play a little bit of a longer piece, but mm -hmm. talk a little bit about the system of musical notation and learning it. Right. I mean, um, basically, the first step in learning the shakuhachi is just getting sound at all. Most people, um, even if they've had prior experience with wind in instruments, tend to just get a minimal sound, if anything, usually just a pff 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 because the nature of the flute, um, you have to break the airstream exactly on this blowing edge right here. So the, uh, the way you shape your lips is essential. Yeah. Uh, and it's you very different. You need to really different. control your breath and mm -hmm. control the muscles in your right. lips and mouth? Uh, that's exactly it. It's uh, the muscles in the lips and mouth to get the right embouchure, which is kind of like a little um, like Buddha half smile sort of thing. And also blowing from your lower belly. Mm. If you just blow from up in your lungs, you're not going to get a good sound either. So but do you need a strong abdomen muscles uh, it, for this and also it, lungs that are used to expanding, I guess. Yeah, uh, it's about deep breathing and diaphragmatic breathing, breathing from your um, tanden in Japanese, dantian, the Chinese uh, name for it, breathing from down in your lower belly. Um, otherwise, you're not going to get the proper shakuhachi sound. Yeah. So the first step in learning is to get a sound at all. Then it's refining the sound, being able to play in pitch. Um, you can bend notes on it, so that's really flexible and adaptable as an instrument. It's a good thing, but also that makes it more difficult to exactly play in pitch, kind of like a violin doesn't have uh, frets to show you where you are, you have to know. Same thing with shakuhachi, you have to um, know the angle you're blowing and how you're blowing and then be able to hear are you in pitch or not. So the second step would be pitch. Then from there, you know, you develop more technique. And then after that point, it's all about kind of letting go the right amount of that at technique so that you can just play without, yeah. you know, so much um, intellectual thought on it. So show us how you maybe, I don't know if you prepare, do you do any kind of exercises before you play to get yourself warmed up and give us a little sound, a little yeah, sound, a taste of sound there. Sure. Th this is um, actually, well, I guess I, afterward I can talk a little bit about the differences in the flutes. But this is a, a flute that I made myself. Um, it's beautiful. Okay, so I'll play just a little scale, basically. So those are just all the open holes. The, the, it's a pentatonic scale, mm -hmm. um, so five notes in it. Um, that's usually what I play to get warmed up. I love that. Even just with that little sample, I feel like I was just whisked <laughs> to Japan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As you, I already feel that meditation coming on. Yeah, it, it does have you know, a really different, uh, because of the pentatonic nature, it does have a, yeah. a different quality to it than the, the Western scale, certainly. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm used to the Native American flute a little mm -hmm. bit, and I can definitely hear the differences between the two as well. Mm -hmm. So I know that you teach this instrument to adults mm -hmm. and children, adults and teens. So talk a little bit about how mm -hmm. you teach or how easy or hard is it for folks to right. learn? Well, um, to become a teacher, um, in traditional sense, you have to get what's called a shihan license uh, or master's license. Uh, my current teacher is Kawase Junsuke uh, III, who is in Tokyo. It's a long story, kind of how I got uh, lucky enough to be able to study with him. But uh, through him, I was able to get this 
master's license or uh, permission to teach in his lineage, essentially. Uh, you can you know, develop your skill and, and teach people, of course, without that, but the real, real, true traditional playing, uh, you pretty much, you know, most people get that shihan or master's license if they're going to teach. So um, It kind of authenticates what yeah, you're doing, it, and it makes it, it seems like more of a sacred practice with a legacy behind it That's that exactly way. right, yeah. So, you know, it ba basically traces your lineage back, much like Zen, you know, priests would have a lineage back all the way, you know, to Buddha in their case. It connects us to the founder of the Kinko school, uh, which is our, you know, particular school of uh, shakuhachi playing. But at any rate, um, yeah, I do teach, uh, I guess the youngest I've taught was, uh, he, I guess when he started, he was about nine or so. Um, I think he's 11 or 12 now, and um, you know, it goes all the way up. My oldest student was uh, in his 70s. Um, you know, uh, the children, of course, if their hands are small, would have to play the smaller size flutes, the shorter lengths, um, you know, but other than that, the kind of the method of teaching is pretty similar, you know, just coaching them to get a sound at first, teaching them how to read the sheet music, um, and uh, you know, then just going from there. Uh, typically, there's um, a, a repertoire that we go through from simple pieces. You start with children's, literally children's songs, Japanese children's songs, and then just get more and more complex pieces as you go along. So do you teach a lot of people? Do a lot of people want to learn, or how do they hear about it or right. find out? Um, you know, people uh, have different ways of coming to it. Uh, the a child that I mentioned, he had heard it somewhere when he was quite young and just fell in love with the sound, you know, and he um, just really, really wanted to start playing. Um, other people just maybe happen upon it uh, randomly almost, like I, like I did. Um, you know, there, there's, uh, I think, as far as I know, I'm the only licensed teacher in New Jersey. So if people huh. do develop an interest in it uh, and find me, you know, the basically. They have to find you. Yeah, so basically. <laughs> people do do Skype lessons, you know, now too, and I, I've done that occasionally. Um, you know, but it's, a, it's much nicer to have a face-to-face -face interaction with someone than yeah. the Skype. So it's pretty rare here, as you're saying, you're the only licensed teacher in in, in the New country, Jer in well, New Jersey. No, no, not in the country. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> in in New are, Jersey, there are that's many, still a lot. <laughs> there are a, a, a good few in New York, you know, of different lineages. Um, yeah. As far as my, my particular lineage, a Kawase a Sensei's lineage, uh, there's only a few in America. That's a, a less common lineage. Um, I, I believe only about like two or three, including myself. But, you know, there are teachers in New York and other areas. But as far as specifically New Jersey, I think, or certainly in this area, I'm the only person. So in Japan, is it still as popular as it has always been? Is there a resurgence? Is it a dying art? Are there many, many thousands of teachers there, would you say, or less than, or less so? Uh, well, you know, I think all, all of the traditional arts uh, in Japan, I wouldn't say they're dying, but they're certainly mm. not um, mm. as big as they used to be. My teacher um, specifically, actually, uh, I remember he gave a speech at the uh, New York Shakuhachi Festival. Um, it was a World Shakuhachi Festival held in New York a while ago. And he said that he was actually hoping that, in, at least in Japan, as the baby boomer generation retired and had more free time, they would, the older people would uh, come to reinvigorate it simply because there weren't as many younger people you know, as he would have hoped. Um, but, you know, there are... Um, say college clubs and things like that in Japan or even uh, grammar schools might have, you know, programs with little short plastic shakuhachis to start, like much like recorders. So, you know, I think it's, um, I don't really know what, how many numbers of teachers there are in Japan, um, probably thousands, you know, mm. but uh, I'm sure it's not as big as it was, say, a century ago, you know, yeah. something like that. Um, so. I wonder, I would think there would be more interest here because there's more interest than ever in just the East. Mm -hmm. You know, and meditative arts and movement arts like Tai Chi and Qigong are becoming increasingly popular here. And so that's really the music that is really the soundtrack to that. So mm -hmm. do you see any of that as well? Because more and more people are coming to meditation and yeah, that? I think probably especially for younger people, you know, uh, people starting in their 20s or whatever, it may be that internationally outside of Japan, uh, that's where it's getting much, like say, more reinvigorated, you know, or yeah. more of a resurgence. That's true. So uh, we're going to hear a, a piece from you, but 
Mm -hmm. There are some, are some other things that you do besides play shokuhachi. Mm -hmm. So do you want to mention, I know that you, do you still do the tea ceremonies? Yes, and, I, okay. I, I, I'm also a licensed teacher in a Japanese tea ceremony. Um, Say what that is for people who aren't familiar. Right, that's... Um, um, that's well, a whole thing in and of itself. It, it is totally <laughs> a, a, a Zen yeah. art of its own as, mm -hmm. as well. Um, uh, that's the t kind that uses matcha, the whisk tea. Um, that's, you know, uh, it's a years-long study as well, uh, and different schools and, you know, levels of licensing, just like shakuhachi is. Mm -hmm. So I'm uh, Omote Senke, which is one of the major schools. Um, I do uh, study under the Heineken Sensei in Kingston and uh, have gotten my, as I said, my teaching license for that uh, several years ago. So I have my own students in that as well. Um, and aside from that, I, you know, in the tea generally, I also still do uh, Chinese tea. I did a classes a couple times at Mercer County Community College, just tea 101 kind of thing. Uh, and aside from tea, I also uh, teach uh, Tai Chi. Nice. Um, have been doing that about as long as Shakuhachi as well. And just say what Tai Chi is, although I, I know people are very familiar. Right. Uh, tai Chi, a Chinese martial art um, that is uh, meditation and um, health building exercise as well as being a martial art. Yeah, moving your energy and your body and finding mm -hmm. balance and it's meditative as well. I love it. Mm -hmm. So um, your music can is recorded, right? And people can find your music if they want to mm -hmm. purchase it on SoundCloud? Um, on well, uh, that's actually, it's not for, for sale. It's just free. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's free. On SoundCloud free. and on Reverb. Free? Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I, had, Race. <laughs> I, I do hope to um, record a CD soon. I, I recorded one a long time ago and kind of sold it on a very, very small scale, but that was uh, like 2004 or something. So I'm not really happy with that anymore. So I, I would l hope to record a new one soon. But yeah, there's a, probably a couple hours worth of music uh, free on SoundCloud and on Reverb Nation as well. So maybe in, in closing, is there any final words, what you would say to people, what you really want people to know about the shakuhachi and about Zen arts? Hmm. Well, I mean, I think as far as uh, Zen arts overall, I think they're really relevant to our day and age, you know, our society and day and age. Absolutely. There's to, a lot of benefits. To be able to focus Mind, body, spirit. much more inside and on the present moment, I think that, you know, refining the self through whatever art you are practicing uh, has a lot, lot to offer in this world of distraction, you know, and everything else that we have. Um, you know, sh shakuhachi in particular, I think is just that. It's a, you're working on something that is rather difficult, but ultimately you're cultivating yourself. You know, the perseverance and patience that it takes just to get through it yeah. at the beginning uh, is, really good for character building, yeah. I would say. So it's a, we a could all point. use a little self-discipline, right? And, mm -hmm. a, and a, 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 some kind of contemplative practice, whatever resonates for you. And if mm -hmm. the shakuhachi resonates for someone, they should reach out to you or do some more research on that, so. I would suggest anyone who has any inkling, you know, that they would like to try it, give it a shot, because I would, you know, I can really say it changed my life in a really positive way, so. Beautiful. So you're on your path. You're following your calling. And mm -hmm. you're going to share a piece with us now on the shakuhachi. Do you want to say anything about the type of piece you're going to share? Mm. It's a really interesting piece. Uh, it's called Inori, uh, which means prayer. And it was composed by Yoshida Seifu, who was one of the great shakuhachi masters of the early uh, 20th century. He was active from the 1920s really into the 1950s. Um, this, his pieces are really special to me because this flute, which is my main flute, actually has his mark on it. Um, he didn't make it, but it says that he approved the tuning. Um, so at least at some point, he probably actually played this flute. It's a, you know antique flute from the 1920s or 30s. Um, but this particular piece is really international uh, in its origin. It was commissioned by uh, a Polish count who wanted him to write something that kind of had an exotic feel for a ballet that this count was putting on that depicted ancient Greek shrine maidens uh, dancing and offering a prayer uh, to the Greek gods. So it's kind of like a really international piece and that's uh, one reason why I like playing it as well. That sounds beautiful. I hope people will listen to it with that ear mm -hmm. as well. So thank you, Glenn Swan, yeah, for thanks. what you've shared. Thank you for the work that you're bringing to the world. Thank mm -hmm. you for being here on Positive Energy. Yeah, thank you very much.
We're wrapping up another enlightening show. I hope we left you feeling energized, inspired, and relaxed. Remember, only you can design a life you love and allow yourself to bring your unique gifts out into the world. A special thank you to Monday Morning Flowers for the beautiful floral arrangement. And thank you for watching. Join us next time on Positive Energy.